Under the cover of darkness, people emerging from a vehicle after it pulls up to a gas station in Plattsburgh, a city in Clinton County, New York. It's located more than 300 miles from New York City and less than 30 miles from the Canadian border. Hi, sir. Where are you coming from? I'm a journalist. Where are you coming from? You came from Canada? My questions met with silence. Tell us where you're coming from. Reluctance. Ma'am, where are you coming from? Can you tell me? And refusal. No. No, you don't want to talk? They start walking away, and we follow them. Sir, can we talk to you? Can you tell me where you're coming from? I'm a journalist. We're doing a story on people crossing the border. We are coming from India. Can you show me the document? No, ma'am. The letterhead identifies the document at a glance. It's from the federal government, the kind of document given to asylum seekers. Okay, so this is what kills me. If all of these people, because, I mean, we got people in America. Oh, there's nothing wrong with this. They're asylum seekers. They're good. It's completely legit. It's legal. Then why wouldn't you tell somebody where you come from? Wouldn't you be proud of your country? Hey, this is where I came from, man. I just came here from Bolivia. Yeah, man, we're, we're Bolivians. We're here to help America. We're here to do our job. Yeah, we're Venezuelans. We're here to help. Yeah, man, we're Somalians. We're Nigerians. We're Ethiopians. You know, we're Germans. We're Swedes. We're here to help. Nobody's saying that, though. Everybody's like in silence as if they've been told, don't tell nobody where you're from. Just follow these instructions. Get to where you're getting to. Even though they got papers in their hand claiming that they're asylum seekers. Don't show nobody your paperwork. If I was an asylum seeker, proud and happy to be here in America, the first thing I would do is like, oh, yeah, we're asylum seekers. Yeah, man, we're here from, from Norway. Hey, check this out. Look, th these are my papers. right? That's my name. This is everything's legit. We're here legit. This is what we're doing, man. We're legally here legit. You don't get that with these people. You get a lot of silence as if there's something going on and don't tell nobody nothing. Just we need to get you from point A to point B in the cover of night, middle of the night when ain't nobody around. You know, news got tipped off. People are like, hey, man, there's people always being dropped off here at night. Come check this out. Man, just make sure you got these papers. I'm telling y'all, there's something going on. And this is up at the northern border. This ain't even a southern border. So now if they're like, hey, we're going to get you guys closer to New York. Therefore, you don't have to fly on a plane. We can just drop you off. Shoot you straight to New York, man. You're right there. What did they say to you after crossing the border illegally? At the border, what did they say? Nothing. You crossed the border, the Canadian border? Yes. How long did it take to walk across the border? Ma'am, this is the main person. Okay, one more question. Are you going to New York City? Uh, yeah. And that's how we finally confirmed where at least one of them is going. The gas station is called Mountain Mart. It's also a bus stop here in upstate New York, and we've confirmed well known around here as a meeting place for migrants after crossing the northern border. About 20 miles from here and closer to Canada, the town of Champlain, where town supervisor Thomas Tremblay regularly deals with complaints from people about migrants on their property. To me, it's like a back door. A back door into the United States, he says. While our eyes look at the flow of people crossing the southern border, here locals will tell you an alternate route into the U.S. through Canada is becoming more popular for people who are desperate to get into the country. We've seen four, six, or eight individuals uh, walking down one of our town roads or village streets. It's a regular thing. <clears throat> it's become a regular thing. Yes. I got them on my cameras all the time, going through the woods. These images from Joe Ashland's deer camera. They're not shy, they just walk down the street. He says migrants end up around his home all the time. You gotta lock everything. Years ago, you never locked any doors around here, but now you do. Have you ever had to place a call to Border Patrol? Oh, plenty of times. <laughs> People around here tell us placing calls to Border Patrol is a regular thing. They'll cross the road from my house, they come over the hill. Canada is only a 10 minute walk. Alan Racine lives right by the northern border. There was a family. There was uh, five of them. There was a husband and wife, a teenager and two little ones. And I talked to them, I couldn't understand the word they said. So I asked them if they needed a bottle of water. It was really hot out. I said, need water or something. And all I seen was a little girl go like this. Yeah. She was hungry. He works in the town of Champlain as a highway superintendent. Water's right over here. And took us on a drive. And then walk right across. We went through a cemetery where he says you can often find evidence of people moving through. Normally when you come down here sometimes you see clothes. Right on here on the cement here. 
change your clothes here. Stretching more than 5,500 miles long, the northern border is the longest land border in the world. More Ain't that crazy how it's the longest land border in the world, but everybody is so focused on the border down in Mexico. That's crazy to me. Because I used to tell everybody all the time, man, I know they're flying in. They can't all be just coming through the Mexican border. I mean, there's way too many people only be coming through Mexico. They've got to be flying in, boating in. they got to be doing something else. But we only got our focus on that southern border. The longest land border in the world sitting right up on Canada. Canadians not saying nothing. Hey, send them over to America. Canadians will be happy. They'd be like, hey, man, go on down to America. You'll, you'll fit right in down there. Go straight to New York. Go to Detroit. You know, it's, it's right across the border. Go to Seattle. It's right across the border. Longest land border in the world. And nobody in America talks about the Canadian border. It's because so many people were distracted by the narrative that all of these people were Mexicans. They were all coming from Mexico. And I told people in all my live streams and videos, they're cutting through Mexico. They're using Mexico like it's somebody's yard and just cutting right through it. Now they're doing the same thing to Canada. They're getting money to do this. They're not doing this on their own. They're getting paid to do this. More than twice as long as the southern border. Here, there are no walls, fences, or major barriers. There is a lot of open land. Walking through grass and surrounded by tall trees, there are many places for migrants to hide. And that's how many of them are navigating the northern border undetected. In a statement to Fox 5 News, a spokesperson for U.S. Customs and Border Protection said, We have seen an increase by USBP in apprehensions of individuals unlawfully crossing the northern border. We looked at the data and found a sharp increase in the number of encounters Border Patrol is having with people illegally crossing from Canada. This fiscal year so far, as of June, 16,000. 1,459 and counting. The number already exceeding last fiscal year with a total of 10,021 encounters. In 2022, Border Patrol agents apprehended just over 2,000 people crossing the northern border illegally and in 2021, the number was only 916. Now as you can see, they didn't include any of the Trump years. Why didn't they put any of the Trump years up there? Because people would probably see, man, it was only like 70 people. It was like 300 people all year crossing through Canada. That was it. The first year of the Biden presidency, the very first year in 2021, when he tried to sign an executive order giving undocumented illegals the right to work, it was 916. Year right after that, it jumped. The year right after that, it jumped again. It got all up to 16,000 people. How did it go from his very first year of signing that document, 916? To this year, 16,000 already. You cannot tell me this is not administration based. This is not government based. Our government is inviting these people in by talking to governments around the world, by using our corporates, the WEF, everybody saying, hey, America is open for business. If you want to go there and make money, I'm telling you, just get to one of the borders. They're going to let you in. And while the numbers of those crossing from the north illegally pale in comparison to what's happening at the southern border, with Border Patrol coming into contact with more than one million crossing illegally this fiscal year so far, and more than two million on record last year and the year before, we've learned there is deep concern about the influx. The numbers are surging because it is easy. So he said it's easy. I mean, we had somebody appointed one of the strictest prosecutors in California, strictest prosecutors. She's tough on crime. She was appointed as border czar. Of course they deny it now, even though everybody was calling her border czar her first year, she was even saying, hey, I, we've been to the border. I'm going to the border because she knew what her job was. It was the border, but she never went. Now all of a sudden she's denying even being the border. I was never the border czar. Why were they calling her the border czar? Why do we call her the border czar? I'll tell you why they call her the border czar. Yeah, watch this. But it's a totally legitimate issue. She was put in charge of the border. Nope. She was in charge migration. of reaching out to the South and Central American migration. countries to stem the immigration. Now what she's up against is folks lying about her border record, calling her a border czar. The Biden team didn't declare her the border czar. Republicans named her the border czar. Do you think that the border would be less of a talking point now if there was less migration to the border, say, if somebody had addressed root causes of migration uh, yeah. sooner? We, we are going to debunk the false, uh, the false uh, you know, characterization 
of the vice president. She was not a border czar. And it's not just us. Independent fact checkers have said the same thing, that that did not exist. And that is not true. They don't want you to believe your ears or your eyes. They told us Joe Biden was fine. They told us he was going to finish the race. Uh, we watched the debate and then it all fell apart. Now they want us to say that even though the borders collapsed, it's an absolute mess. It's uh, along with Afghanistan, the biggest blight in their administration. So we have to remove it from Kamala Harris's portfolio by telling everyone we never said it. The problem is you did. Listen. I asked her, uh, the VP today, because she's the most qualified person to do it, to lead our efforts with uh, Mexico and the Northern Triangle and the countries uh, that uh, help us. we're going to need help in stemming the movement of uh, so many folks uh, stemming the migration to our southern border. Well, we are going to the border. We have to deal with what's happening at the border. There's no question about that. That's not a debatable point. How do you decide that right now is the right time to make your first trip to the border? Well, it's not my first trip. I've been to the border many times. As the person in charge of the response. So the important aspect of this visit is leading this visit after the work that we did in Guatemala and Mexico. Right, it's, exactly. It's, it's so, just hilarious. So the point right. showing that was, was to illustrate that all of that was from 2021. Look at the dates in the top corners of every clip I just played. The dates were 2021 when they appointed her as border czar. Even Biden says she's the most qualified person to deal with this immigration issue. He said it from his mouth. She's the most qualified person to deal with it. I've told her you have to get in charge of the border down in Mexico, the Northern Triangle. You've got to do this. And she, you can see in the pictures, she started, this was 2021. She started going places, went to El Paso, shaking hands with border agents around. She was doing border duties, 2021. Look at the numbers in 2021 at the Northern border. 900 people so in 2021 it wasn't that crazy it was 900 people across the canadian border 2021 now look after she got that position and she just dropped the ball what happened it spiked went from 916 to over 2000 over 2000 10,000 10,000 out of 16,000 and she was responsible for that and she got a lot of people going i wasn't responsible i don't know what you're talking about but biden said you're the most qualified person to do it. If that is the Democrats' most qualified person to do it immigration, we're in some serious trouble if this lady gets elected. Around here, law enforcement regularly assists Border Patrol. With the border as it is, the Border Patrol is just flat out understaffed on the northern border. They have long stretches of border that they just don't have enough people to cover. Major Nicholas Leon is a chief deputy with the Clinton County Sheriff's Office. There's been a large influx of people and probably through you know organized crime that's it's making money off it and and you know funneling these people through this particular area because out of the entire northern border it's the easiest through metropolitan areas in Canada where they can fly into and it's easiest to cross the border with a huge pipeline directly down to New York City. You find a lot of them are headed to New York City? Yes. Yeah. We've learned there is coordination between U.S. and Canadian officials. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police confirming to Fox 5 News human smugglers are selling the journey south to migrants. We know that there are human smuggling operations going on. Uh, we have active investigations on the matter. We've also arrested and charged a few smugglers recently. But the, the reality is that just by the sheer volume of migrants, this is a highly sophisticated operation that we're talking about. Do we not say on this channel that we've seen patterns of this before in their countries? We see what they're doing at the airports here, how they're manipulating systems, how they're scamming, and it's the same things they did in their own country. This is all organized. These people are not just waking up one day going, I want to go to America and, and get a new job. No, there are organized criminals embedded into these immigrant caravans. They're saying, let's go to America. This is what we do. We do the same thing there we was doing here, but now we're getting U.S. dollars for it, not these little pennies we're doing for it down here. Let's go to America. Let's keep this going. We can get way more money this way. We can get fake IDs. We can get driver's license. We can do this. Whatever we do on Uber here, because Uber's worldwide, whatever we're doing on Uber here, we can do it up there, man. We know how to run it. These guys are not stupid. These are law enforcement officials. They know exactly what's going on. They have patterns of it. They are catching people in the act of doing it. 
Yet we've got people here in America. These people ain't criminals. They ain't criminals. They're like, dude, we're catching organized crime all the time. We're catching criminals. We're catching all these coyotes up here. We're catching smugglers. These guys are criminals. They're trying to get into America to do more crime, to recruit more criminals, to get more money. This is what they're doing. But we got people here on these channels that are denying that criminals are involved in this. No, these people are all legit. They're all asylum seekers. They're all legit. You guys are just racist. You guys are xenophobes. This is why I do these videos for the people who are just not that sharp. The pattern, all too familiar. The federal government has long documented human smugglers working at the southern border, exploiting migrants who are willing to do almost anything to get to America. U.S. Customs and Border Protection on record with information like this. Transnational criminal organizations pose significant dangers to migrants as they not only seek to profit from their exploitation, but also have little regard for their well-being, exposing them to violent encounters, injury, and death. But again, it's not just criminals doing it. Our U.S. government is doing it. Our U.S. corporations are doing it. They're luring these people here. Dara even said it on his video. I like to sell immigrants the American dream. They're luring these people into dangerous situations by saying, if you get to America, we got a pot of gold for you. And these people are going through dangerous conditions, being exploited even when they get here. Everything's not what people say it was going to be. They get here. They're all huddled up in hotels. They're all cramped in apartments. I mean, they're getting a lot of money, but guess who's getting the money? The people who they're renting the vehicles from, the people who they're buying the fake IDs from, that's who's getting all the money. They're getting here and getting exploited by all these organizations, all these criminals, and even the U.S. government and the corporations out here who know these people ain't got nowhere else to go. You got them desperate now. You got them this far. You got them desperate. They can't turn around and go back home. You can pay them whatever you want to pay them. They're there paying people $7 an hour, $22 an hour. I mean, they got black SUV drivers. We're making 80, 90, 100 dollars an hour black SUV. These people are renting SUVs, and by the time they finish paying for everything, these guys are only making like 40 dollars an hour, half of what we make, 40 percent of what we make. Because whoever's renting the truck and doing all the crazy, they're exploiting these people. This is why they got immigration being so easy right now, because they like these people are desperate. They're only making three dollars a month where they're from. They're not, probably not even making that. We can get them over to America, work them like dogs, 80 hours a week. They'll be happy to do it because it's more than $3 a month. We got some serious thinking to do. We're going to get this country back in order. We got some serious thinking to do. And people that out there thinking this is a game, this ain't a game. These are real lives involved. American lives are involved. Lives of people from all over the world coming here thinking they're going to take this country, leaving us high and dry while they get all the benefits of the resources this country got to offer. Here in upstate New York, the dangers of crossing the border are apparent. The terrain's pretty rugged, it's cedar, it's thick, you know, it's swampy, and they got to go through that. I personally have worked on an investigation of a migrant coming through in the winter. She ended up getting in a high water area, ended up drowning. But not enough to deter the growing flow of migrants who are after that American dream. They just want to go to New York City. For many, New York City is where they believe they'll find it, regardless of the risk and the price. How are you feeling right now? I I don't know. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. You're happy? Yeah. Stephanie Bertini, Fox 5 News. And it's funny how at the end of the video, he hops in an Uber or a Lyft. That ain't a taxi. That ain't his buddy, because his buddy would get out. Hey, how you doing, Jimmy? What's good? Welcome to America. That was an Uber or a Lyft picking this dude up. So how do they already got Uber and Lyft accounts when they get here? Did somebody, like, give them something when they was up in Canada? Like, hey, when you get here, here's the Uber card right here. Use this Uber card. Make sure you get you an Uber. It'll take you down to New York. It'll automatically come out of here. This These people are at the bus station. They're like 300 miles away or something weird like that. They said it was like 300 miles away. And somehow a Uber just shows up. Come on, man. Y'all know better than this. Y'all sitting there watching the video like I'm watching it. Dude is getting in the back seat with his backpack and everything. No trunk popping open, car just pulled up. This is a typical Uber Lyft ride. Picking these immigrants up the moment they hit soil. First thing they do is get an Uber or a Lyft. 
Come on, man. Y'all know something shady with this. If Uber and Lyft ain't even setting this stuff up for them, who knows? They probably get to the hotel, got a hot dog and a hamburger sitting there from Tony Zoo over at DoorDash. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going now? New York. New York City? Yeah. We spotted a New York City yellow taxi cab more than a five hour drive away from home. We're told taxi, rideshare, and private drivers are all part of the plan to get migrants from here to New York City. One driver agreed to share details if we protect his identity. How much is the going rate? Price. Some people they charge 150, 130, 135 like that. Per person? Yeah. How do they find you? Everybody driver, they park the car here, everybody know. Some people, they go by bus. This gas station is also a bus stop. In the middle of the night, we watched a mother and her children get on a bus headed to New York City. She didn't want us to show her face. In Spanish, she told me they're from Venezuela and in search of a better life. The pursuit of the American dream has long been documented as the fuel for the illegal journey countless migrants keep making into the U.S. He wasn't surprised when we told him about that yellow taxi cab we saw. Its medallion, we later confirmed, traces back to the city. We're well aware of the yellow cabs. We're aware there is a border operation to pick people up. And there's money to make. There's always money to be made. So as you can see, even like in America, the law enforcement knows what's going on. Just like when we talk about what's going on at the airports. We're like, hey man, they're up here, they got like jammers. They're jamming up the queue. They're doing, you know, antitrust law violations. They know what these people are doing. The law enforcement has their hands tied because these people are asylum seekers. And once they do that, international law hits. So they can only do so much before they can charge somebody with an American law or an American statute. Even though they're here, they're illegally here, but they're here based on international law of asylum seekers. That's the loophole that's throwing everybody. Canadian law enforcement confirming human smugglers are behind it all. And like at the southern border, transnational crime is part of the whole picture. We have relevant intelligence that the Mexican cartels are involved in human smuggling operations in Canada. We've known that for quite some time. So we do know that the Mexican cartels are involved in this, but there are also other uh, organized crime groups. Some of them are located here in Canada, and we have active investigations to uncover that, you know, who, who's behind it. It's not the families that are seeking asylum. It's not the people trying to avoid these horrific actions in their own countries. It's the people that want to bring that violence here. We've talked about a lot of, you know, migration issues. There's also contraband, firearms, drugs, tobacco. So, when our patrol officers are responding to a call, they can never assume that it's going to be an illegal migration. So this is a national security issue for both the Canadian and the U.S. government? Yes. After days of work here, e que te dice a la frontera? it's now clear as day to us. Most of the people, they come from Canada. That there's much more to know about the pipeline bringing migrants into the country through Canada. There's a lot more going on than what even the media talks about. These people are from Canada. They're doing the report from Canada. Nobody in America is doing this report. I'm probably one of the only Americans talking about the Canadian border and what's sneaking over into New York. So welcome to American media now, because I'm looking all over the world. I'm looking in Venezuela. I'm looking in Somalia. Like I said, I'm going to do something about Somalia. I'm looking for news everywhere, because if it affects our country, I think we should know about it. We have corporations, organizations, whether it's legal organizations or illegal criminal organizations, and they're funneling people to our country for exploitation. They're doing this for a reason. And I'm bold enough to report on it. A lot of channels may not talk about it. I'm willing to talk about it. We got a lot of drivers out there who are jumping in these comments. That's not what's really going on. You don't know what's going on. They have no idea. If you talk about this stuff to all these other drivers, no, they have to have licenses, you know, they have to have, you know, visas and stuff. They have to, trust me, these people are getting to this country somehow, and a lot of news places are digging into it. And I know there's organizations and governments that don't want people talking about this, but we're going to have this discussion.